welcome to another edition of Cracking and Cryptic where very unusually we're going to revisit a puzzle that we've already solved. Um, so you may have watched a video that I did a couple of days ago on solving a diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Telegraph last Friday. Um, and we worked through it and we found, um, we found a way to logically get to an answer. But we've had an absolutely fascinating comment from one of the viewers uh, referring to a, a quite an exotic technique um, that can also be used to solve this puzzle and can actually be used to solve it far more efficiently than the version or the, the logic that I found. And I thought we should therefore devote a little bit of time to trying to understand how that logic works. Now, the you can see on the screen there, hopefully, um, uh, we're at an incredibly early point in the solve here. Um, I've only put in two eights. There are absolutely no pencil marks at all. You can see the blue eights there on the screen. And this technique actually allows us to enter in another eight immediately in the grid. Um, and you may you may want to pause the video now and just study um, the pattern and see if you can see any way of doing that um, easily. It's not easy to spot. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up. Um, so this is exactly the position that you've just seen. And what I've done is I've labelled all of the open positions for eights um, on the screen. So you can you can study that now and, and I think it's actually quite instructive to do that. Can you actually see a way of resolving where to put these eights just based off this pattern? Um, it's not easy so don't worry if you can't. I'm going to try and explain it now. Now the first thing to note is that um, I'm going to remove this eight, this, this eight over here just to illustrate the point because we've come across so-called x-swings before in, in solving and the, these are situations where an eight, can, uh, 8 appears in exactly the same columns or rows in two different positions. So you can see here in row 5 we have an 8 in this position and this position uh, and in row 8 we have 8s appearing in the same position and only these two positions. Now in this situation whichever way round these 8s end up being in the final solution it should be pretty clear that we'd be able to remove this 8, this 8 and this 8 as candidates from the other cells and that's because whichever way these 8s go you, we're not going to be able to put another 8 in these columns. If this was an 8 for example then this would be an 8 and this would be an 8 which would clearly break the puzzle. So a simple x-wing um, isn't that hard to spot. But here we have a very interesting uh, arrangement. This is actually I think called a uh, finned x-wing where we have a, another 8 poking out in this box here. So we, we nearly have an x-wing but in this spot block we have this other candidate for 8. Now in this situation we can actually still make progress what, the way to think about this logically is to think about the two possibilities um, that could exist. So either this 8 will be incorrect, in which case we're back to this position and we can make the eliminations we've just discussed, or this 8 will be true. Now if this 8 is true, that doesn't actually affect anything over here, over here, or over here, but it does mean that this 8 could not would not be true. So in either situation, either where the x-wing is proved to be true or where this is proved to be true, this 8 gets eliminated. Now the elimination of that 8 you can see is going to be very important because there's now only one per candidate for where an 8 can go in row 9. It could only go here. Um, and that's so incredibly, we're actually, we'd be actually be able to eliminate this 8 immediately, uh, or eliminate that 8 immediately, place an 8 here uh, using this logic. Now, that's one way to think about it, but believe it or not, there is another way as well, uh, using this, an even more uh, exotic technique called Sashimi X-Wing, 
and I will now attempt to explain that. And to understand this, we need to spot a slightly different X-wing pattern, and it's an incomplete or degenerate X-wing. So if we look now at columns 5 and columns 9, you can see in column 5 there's two positions where an 8 can go, this position and this position. And in column 9, there's this position where an 8 can go, and then what we actually want to focus on here is this cell here. Now, if this cell had been an 8, we would have had a perfect X-wing, and um, we would have been able to eliminate uh, this candidate. Um, but actually, in this cell, we have a, we have a 7. Um, we, do, we don't have an 8 at all. But next to the 7, we have, we have another 8. We have a, what's called a fin to our, um, uh, our X-wing pattern. And believe it or not, this, this 8 here allows us to make some more deductions. And again, we're going to run through the logic by considering... Uh, let's have a look actually at column 5. This is probably the easiest way of showing this. The and the first thing we ask is, well, what happens if this 8 is true? If this 8 is true, you can see this 8 would be false. This 8 would be false. And this 8 would have to be true. Now, because this 8 is true, it would allow us to eliminate this 8, that, that 8 that we actually eliminated using our simple uh, finned X-wing uh, in the first bit of the explanation. What happens if this 8 isn't true? If this 8 isn't true, this 8 will be true. And again, we'll eliminate this 8. So either way round, despite the fact that this is a 7 here, <laughs> we're actually able to eliminate this 8. And it's because of this, this property of the, these 8s being in the same block as this 7 and, and finned away from it. So in fact, if there was another 8 in this position, by exactly the same logic, we'd still be able to eliminate this 8 here. So it doesn't matter how many 8s there are, in providing they're in the same block, we're actually able to make the same deduction. So all of that allows us to actually write in an 8 here, which is, uh, which is a nice thing to be able to do. So let's uh, get rid of some 8s here. And um, we go from there. Now, what, I've gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to imagine we hadn't solved this 8. Um, if it lets me delete it. Um, just because I want to show the other example of this, I'll remove these 8s. Well, remember we did some logic that gave us an 8 here later. Um, but I want to talk about the second way in, this, in which this arises. And it arises, you know, I've, I've hardly made any more progress at all compared to my two original 8s. I've added another four numbers. I've, I've added some 6s and a 1. And now um, this comment suggests we should look at fours, so I'm going to mark those in and we'll have a look at those. So here we go, and again you can see here um, what we're always looking out for when we're trying to find these sort of exotic patterns. The, the thing you need to have to start uh, to start looking for it is a row or a column where a candidate can only appear in two positions. So if we look at column two here, you can see that fours can only appear in two positions. So this might get sort of our spider sense tingling in terms of is there going to be anything we can do here. Now if we shuffle along to column nine and we take a look, well we've got a four here in the right position, it corresponds to the four here. But sliding down the grid, we've got a seven in, in, in the corresponding position over here. So the only sort of sort of exotic fish we're going to be able to look for is the sashimi. Uh, finned X-wing, and that would be if we have fours extending um, upwards here. And look, we do. We have a four in both of these positions. So we can use the logic that we have just discussed in relation to the eights to say, okay, well, there's there's two chances again. If this is correct, you can see that this will not be correct. Therefore, one of these two will be correct. And therefore, this four here will definitely be incorrect. 
looking at, so we could remove that 4. What about if this is not correct? Well, if this is not correct, this will be correct. And if this is correct, again, this 4 here gets eliminated. So either way round, we, we're able to eliminate this 4. And I think combined with the fact that we're very limited on where 4s can go, because if you remember from the exercise we just did, we were able to conclude that an 8 is actually forced into this position. You can now see that in this bottom row we've got 4s here, that's going to allow us to eliminate some 4s. And I, I think from there, the solve would become much more straightforward. Um, not saying that none of the techniques that we talked about in the earlier video would be relevant, I think that they would still be relevant, but if you have the capacity and the ability to spot this sort of thing, it's incredibly powerful early on in a, in a solve. So what I might do, depending on comments, is, is do another video on, on this topic. Um, I appreciate it's, it's a lot more exotic than some of the things we normally cover. You remember that Mark and I, our DNA really is in speed solving, where we wouldn't really have the time to start uh, fishing around, excuse the pun, uh, some of these exotic patterns, um, beautiful as they are. Um, but uh, I certainly enjoy going over them in, in a video. I think they're, they're incredibly interesting. And yeah, I hope you got something out of this and you can add it to your, your, your portfolio of tools you're using when you're doing your own solving. And finally, just a big thank you to Sam Kappelman Lines here. You can see the comment there below the video. Um, you know, absolutely love getting feedback like this. It's so interesting. Um, so great many thanks to him. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.